Hi everyone, today we are going to do the video version of Press Your Luck and review for Unit 3. Normally you would come up to the whiteboard and click on one of these animals and it would bring you to a question. So let's go to our first question. So for each of these questions, go ahead and pause the video, think through it, and then unpause and see if you get it correct. What is the period of this function? Remember, y equals a sine k x minus b plus d. In this case, the d, instead of being in the back, is up here. So for some reason, they stuck it out in the front. This is a sine curve. Sine, the period, is normally 2 pi. But in this case, since there's extra numbers there, we're going to have to divide by k. k, in this case, is the 3. So the period is 2 pi divided by 3, or 2 pi over 3. Pause the video. What is the amplitude? The a is right here, so the amplitude is the absolute value of a, it is seven. Remember to take the absolute value, you don't include the negative with the amplitude. Go ahead and pause the video and think about what is the range of this? So a quick way to do the range is to think about where is the midline. Your d is at y equals four, this is your midline. And your range has to do with your amplitude, and your amplitude was 7. And so from that midline, from y equals 4, you're going to want to go up 7 and down 7, because your amplitude would be 7. So your range is going to range from 11 to negative 3, or if we write it out, it would be from negative 3 up to positive 11. I don't think we actually did one like that in the worksheet, so that's a good one to learn. This is another really interesting one. It says, what is the y-intercept of this graph? Where does it cross the y-axis? Let me walk you through this one. So first, you let x equal 0. So you plug in a 0 for the x. y equals 4 minus 7 sine 3 times 0 plus pi over 2, and now you simplify. So y equals 4 minus 7 sine, distribute the 3. So 3 times 0 is just 0, you don't really need that, and 3 times pi over 2 is 3 pi over 2. Next, think about the sine of 3 pi over 2. 3 pi over 2 is down here. This is 3 pi over 2. What is the sign there? Well, the coordinate there is over 0, down 1, and the sign is the y value. So y equals 4 minus 7, and then instead of sine 3 pi over 2, you plug in negative 1, because that is the sign at that spot. y equals 4 plus 7, which is 11. So the y-intercept is at positive 11 on the y-axis. That's pretty cool. So the y-intercept would be over 0, up 11. Next, pause the video. Figure out the phase shift. So remember x minus b. b is your phase shift. So think of this as x minus negative pi over 2. Because of the plus, it would have to be minus a minus. So the phase shift is negative pi over 2, or to the left, pi over 2. It's the opposite of whatever you see in there. If it looks like a positive, you're actually going to go left. We've already kind of talked about this one, but think about what is the midline? Your d is the 4, so your midline is y equals 4. Go ahead, pause the video, and think about this one. Remember the cosine function usually starts above the x-axis, above y equals 0, and it goes down, and then it goes like this. So it goes down to 0, down to negative 1, back up to 0, up to positive 1. And so the domain is what are the x values? How far left and right does it go? 
Well, it goes forever to the left and forever to the right. So it's negative infinity to positive infinity. Ooh, what function does this graph represent? Think about what is this the graph of? Well, we start down here at negative one, go to zero, go to positive one. It looks to me like we're starting in the lower left, working our way up to the right. This is a graph of y equals tangent x. The vertical asymptotes are at negative pi over two and positive pi over two. What function does this graph represent? Starts right here at zero, zero and goes up. It ends by the time it gets to two pi. This is y equals sine x. What function does this graph represent? Starts on the left up above and works its way down to the right. This is cotangent, y equals cotangent x. What function does this graph represent? You can see right here, it starts one above the x-axis, goes to zero, goes to negative one, back to zero, back to positive one. This one is y equals cosine x. It starts above the midline. What is the period of this function? Go ahead, pause the video, try to figure that out. Remember for cosine, the period is normally two pi, so we do two pi divided by k, and in this case, our k is the two. Two pi divided by two is pi, pi is our period. What is the y-intercept of this function? See if you can remember how to do this. We just did one not too long ago. So if you're stumped, remember this is the one where you let x equal zero. So y equals four cosine two times zero plus pi over two minus one. Let's simplify. y equals four cosine Two times zero is just zero, and then two times pi over two, the twos will cancel out, so you'll just get pi. And then we have minus one. What is the cosine at pi? Well, think about pi is over here at 180. The coordinate there is negative one, zero. Cosine is the x value. So y equals four times negative one minus one. You plug in, for cosine of pi, you plug in a negative one. Y equals negative four minus one, which is negative five. So the y-intercept would be over zero, down five. What is the phase shift? Remember, it's your b. It's gonna be negative pi over two. So it's gonna to be to the left, pi over two. What is the midline? This is your D in the back here. So your midline is at Y equals negative one. What is the period of Y equals tangent X? For sine and cosine, the period is normally two pi. For tangent and cotangent, what is the period usually? If you're thinking the period is usually pi and there's no other numbers added on here or anything, you are correct, the period is pi. Ooh, what are two consecutive vertical asymptotes of y equals cotangent x? So think about cotangent. Uh, where are the vertical asymptotes usually? Well, I'm kind of thinking back and the vertical asymptotes were at zero, and pi. So zero and pi, and then for cotangent, it started up here, went to zero, went to here, and it kind of did a smooth curve like this. That was cotangent. So zero and pi are your vertical asymptotes. Does this function reflect over the x-axis? 
It has to do with this negative 7. Since that is the a and a is negative, yes, it will reflect over the x-axis because of this negative sign. What is the amplitude? Remember, y equals a cosine, the a is the 4. So absolute value of 4 is 4. What is the horizontal stretch or shrink? So think of the normal period for cosine. Normally the period for cosine is 2 pi, but we have to divide it by k. In this case, 2 is the k. So 2 pi divided by 2 is pi. So instead of the period going from 0 to 2 pi, it's going from 0 to pi. It's smaller, it's shrinking by 1 half. So what you do is you take the reciprocal of that, of that k. So the shrink of 1 over 2. What is the range? Go ahead, pause the video and try this one. Range means how high up and down does your graph go? Where is your midline? Your midline is at y equals negative 1, right? That's your midline. Now your amplitude is 4. That means it's going to go 4 above and 4 below. So add 4, subtract 4. If I add 4, I get positive 3. If I subtract 4, I get negative 5. Those are my highest and lowest points. So what's my range? It's going to go from negative 5 to positive 3. Uh, not quite as fun as playing press your luck in class, but still a good review of Unit 3. Will you please now try Worksheet Unit 3 review and you'll be getting ready to take that quiz.